welcome back to Sunday School. I hope you had a great week. I've attached many things for you to do for our lesson today. There are a couple of great songs for you to listen to as well. I also have something for you to read or to have your parents read to you. It goes along with our theme today, and it was one of my favorite comic strips when I was growing up. Well, the last two Sundays we spent looking back at two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and Judas. During the Last Supper, Jesus told his disciples, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. So after spending three years with his disciples, Jesus really did consider them to be his friends. They shared their lives with one another, and he shared everything with them, even his secret. The book of Matthew tells us, then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. He also told them that you can show me that you are my friend by following my commandment to love one another. Another example of a friendship in the Bible is the strong friendship between David and Jonathan. It was a true friendship based on love and respect. Their friendship lasted even through very difficult circumstances. So it got me thinking, what does it mean to be a friend and how do we know how to choose our friends? I'm going to share with you just some of what we were taught in the Bible. But first, I want you to remember what you've been taught in Sunday school. First, you always have a friend in Jesus. For you and for me, his friends, he died for us. As the scripture reads, he laid down his life for us. Why? So that we could have a relationship with God. Secondly, Jesus tells us that he will know that we have chosen him as our friend by learning his teachings and by following his commandment to love one another. So we're made to have relationships like friendships. So what does that mean to be a friend? How do we know if someone is our friend? Many, many years before Jesus was born, the book of Proverbs was written. This book was written to help people make wise choices. Much of the book was written by King Solomon, who was remembered as being very wise. Including in this book is advice on making friends. So in Proverbs, Solomon tells us, a friend loves at all times. That means our friends are there for us in good times, like celebrating our birthday. They're there for us in bad times, like when we fall off of our bike or when we're not feeling well. They're also our friend when they sit and they talk with us and they listen to us, even when they would rather be playing during recess. Do you know what else a friend does? He goes out of his way to do something for you, even when it's not easy or convenient. Like maybe running out in the rain to put your bike away after you've fallen off and gotten hurt and you couldn't put it away yourself. Those are some examples of how to be a friend. Now, how do you know how to choose a friend? Well, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, do not be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. So we must choose carefully who our friends are since bad company ruins good morals. So what are some examples of good morals? Well, honesty, being truthful, Self-control, controlling our words and our behavior. Gratitude, showing appreciation for something someone has done for you. And finally, respect, admiring or looking up to someone like a teacher or your parents or your grandparents. So you've been raised with parents and grandparents who have set a very good example for you. You've come to church every Sunday to learn the lessons that God and Jesus have taught us and how to lead a happy, fruitful life and how to make good choices. Even with all of that in our lives, we can forget all of this by simply choosing to hang around friends that have not been raised like you. If you're not strong enough in your beliefs on what is right and wrong, then you can easily make poor choices and become like them. Sometimes you might just wanna be part of the cool kids in school. Maybe you've been in a situation where you saw a friend or a group of kids being dishonest or disrespectful. You may not be like them, but if this is the group of friends you choose to be around, then others will think that you are something that you're not just because of the friends that you choose to be around. 
In Proverbs, Solomon tells us, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Well, that's because we tend to become like whoever we are around. If you choose to hang out with friends who make good decisions, then you also will make good decisions. You also might learn something new that makes you wiser. The opposite can also be true. People we choose to be with that make bad decisions can do us harm by leading us into making bad choices. We should constantly be asking ourselves if this person we're hanging out with who is being disrespectful or dishonest is making us a better person. Well, the answer is positively no. I'll leave you with these thoughts. When we look at Jesus and his friends, he chose to spend time with here on earth. One of them, Judas, was shown to be not wise, was shown to be not a wise choice. Due to his lack of character, he was dishonest. This friendship harmed Jesus. Peter and the other 10 disciples proved to be true friends. We find that after Jesus died, they carried on with his teachings and telling people who Jesus was. In fact, many of the disciples proved to be Jesus' true friends as most died standing up for their friend and for his teachings. So many people think they need many, many friends, but really you only need one or two. Your friend could be your brother or a sister or a cousin. I know people who say their mom or their dad are their best friends. For me growing up, I had very few good friends in school, mostly because I did pay a lot of attention to how they behaved or how they spoke. Also important to me was how serious they took their schoolwork. So you can see that this limited the number of friends that I had. Sometimes it was hard, but I didn't feel like I needed to fit in. And you know why? Because I had a family to come home to, where I was safe and was loved for who I was. Beside my sister and my brother, I also had a cousin who was my best friend. We grew up together with many of the same values and interests, and we spent a lot of time laughing together. I saw her every Sunday in Sunday school, and we spent a lot of time together in the summer. As we get older, we do change, and so might our best friends, but not our friendships. Today, if you were to ask me who my best friend was, I would say my best friend is my husband, but I still hold close to my heart my friendship with my cousin. Jesus taught us, and the Bible has it written down for us. We have the tools that we need to be a good friend and to be able to choose a good friend. So I'll leave you with this memory verse that I quoted to you earlier, and I think it's a really good one to memorize. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Let's close in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for teaching us how to be good friends. We thank you for guiding us through your word and how to make wise choices when we decide who our friends should be. We know that you want the best for us and you want us to live a happy life. Your word gives us the wisdom and strength to stay on a path that you've laid out for us, the path that leads us to a fruitful life filled with happiness. Watch over each one of us. Give us the courage to stand up for what we know is right so that your glory can shine through each one of us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you have a wonderful week, and I look forward to getting together with you again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye for now.